As mentioned earlier, shelf life is a primary challenge with wet ethanol co-products. Although storage in either a bag or bunker can help reduce the rate and extent of spoilage, some spoilage still occurs and is inevitable. Mold production and foul odor may occur during the storage of wet co-products, especially when piled and left uncovered. Our experience has shown that the amount of mold growth is directly proportional to the oxygen permeability of the plastic covering over the storage site, with thicker plastics resulting in less visible mold. Many samples of co-products have been analyzed for the presence of mycotoxins, aflatoxins, okratoxins, vomitoxins, and fumonisins. Any mycotoxins found were present at levels below FDA threshold levels, indicating they are of minimal concern. We have not measured the corn going into the ethanol plant for mycotoxins and then measured mycotoxins in the byproduct from that same corn. Spoilage losses are likely lower for bagging compared to bunker storage, but have been measured from 2 to 15 percent. In most situations, it's not always practical to separate spoiled and non-spoiled co-products during feeding. Spoiled co-products can simply be diluted into larger amounts of non-spoiled material, thereby reducing the amount of spoiled material fed. Research trials have recently been conducted to evaluate the impact of feeding spoiled co-products compared to non-spoiled material in feedlot diets. In this trial, cattle were fed either spoiled or non-spoiled wet distillers grains plus solubles at 40% of the diet on a dry matter basis, or a dry rolled corn-based control diet. WDGS was either stored in an uncovered bunker or in a plastic ag bag and stored anaerobically. Samples were collected daily and analyzed for nutrient composition. Nutrient analysis showed that, as a percentage of the original composition, the spoiled material lost 16% fat, 8% fiber, and 12.3% crude protein. However, there was no effect on feedlot cattle performance. Despite nutrient losses, feeding the control, non-spoiled, or spoiled wet distillers grains plus solubles treatments did not affect dry matter intake. No difference in average daily gain, final body weight, or feed efficiency was observed between non-spoiled and spoiled wet distillers grains plus solubles. However, both wet distillers grains plus solubles treatments were greater in average daily gain, final body weight, and more efficient compared to the control. Even though the spoiled commodity changed in composition from the initiation of the trial to the end, it's evident that the spoilage occurring when stored in a bunker had no effect on the performance of finishing steers. Other trials have evaluated different storage methods and covering treatments for ethanol co-products. 55-gallon steel barrels have been implemented in trials to serve as a model for bunker storage. In a particular trial, barrels were filled with one of two mixes, either 70% wet distillers grains plus solubles and 30% straw on a dry matter basis, or modified distillers grains plus solubles by itself. Barrels were filled and then assigned to one of six different covering treatments. Barrels were either left uncovered, covered with a plastic tarp, covered with salt, covered with condensed corn distiller solubles, covered with condensed corn distiller solubles mixed with salt, or covered with condensed corn distiller solubles mixed with straw. Barrels were stored for 60 days, opened, and the spoiled and non-spoiled material was measured, sampled, and analyzed for nutrient composition. Overall, spoilage caused a loss in dry matter, fat, and organic matter. Also, pH increased in the spoiled material. The greatest loss in fat resulted when CCDS and CCDS mixed with straw were used. It's important to look at the amount of fat and organic matter lost, as these are two sources of energy in the distillers. Using plastic as a cover resulted in the least amount of fat loss for both the wet distillers grains plus solubles and straw mixture, and the modified distillers grains plus solubles. The other treatments fell intermediate in terms of fat loss during the spoilage process. Barrels using either plastic or condensed corn distiller solubles with salt as covers had the least amount of dry matter, organic matter, and fat lost because both covers resulted in the least amount of spoilage out of the six cover treatments. The spoilage process also caused the pH of the original mixtures to increase from 4.4 to 6.7 with a plastic cover and from 4.4 to 6.1 with a cover comprised of condensed corn distiller solubles and salt. Covers made of plastic or condensed corn distiller solubles with salt resulted in less spoilage, thus decreasing nutrient losses for the treatments. The barrels left uncovered resulted in the greatest amount of spoilage, which caused greater nutrient losses for the co-products. The plastic and condensed corn distiller solubles with salt covering methods reduced the amount of air that reached the surface of the mix, allowing the distiller's product to retain its original feeding value. However, up to 80% of the CCDS can be lost when used as a cover, which is decreased when mixed with salt. 
Potentially, producers could use condensed corn distiller solubles as a cover for storing co-products in bunker situations. However, the purchase cost of CCDS and loss need to be considered when evaluating this option. Plastic covers would be highly recommended if available.